So hello, today on the LA interview we have uh, Cosman and he's going to share with us his experience um, you know, with finance when he was an undergrad and uh, hopefully at the end of the interview he's going to give us some uh, invaluable tips or tip for students. So thank you for agreeing to come well, on. Thanks for interview. having me. Yeah, so um, we're sharing stories about professors and uh, what their experience were like when they were an undergrad. So when you were an undergrad, what were some of your main financial concerns? Or so I mean, that was a long time ago, but I remember the concerns. Yeah. And I think they're kind of universal in many yeah. ways. So yeah. uh, paying rent was number one thing. Right. Um, and I didn't have access to student residence for the first three years because okay. they were all book solid. Wow. Um, and I was on a waiting list. Where were you first of all? So that was in Europe. In Europe, so it was yeah. a different system. Priority was for fourth year students. So it was okay. the, the reverse order. So I had to rent. So I had unsavory roommates. <laughs> um, so you might be able to relate to that. So, so yeah. I think that's very relatable. <laughs> um, and then my second year university, I and then that's also kind of connecting to your maybe possible other things. Uh, probably one of the worst financial decisions I made, and it was oh, to yeah. save money. Okay. <laughs> so I ended up renting a place uh, far away. It was an hour and a half by transit. Right. Um, with about half an hour extra walking on top of the of that. Uh, it was okay. very cheap. How'd you exercise in there? I got my exercise, but the place was not heated in oh, the wow. winter. Oh, wow. So I had to carry like a sleeping bag in my bedroom um, <laughs> because it was cheap. So, wow. That was That's probably really an adventure. That was a very big adventure, and it was a year of that. Wow. Um, and then halfway through, my landlady cut my phone access because she didn't want to. How do... did this affect your your academics? Like, were you performing well in school? Is... I was okay in school with that. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. much. I mean, I was relatively pissed off with it all. But did you find it stressful? Like, it was very stressful and kind of worrying about money at the same time. Yeah. And I had the scholarship, so that was okay. okay. And I had to stretch that, so that was. So you didn't have a. A part-time it's not the norm to get like a part-time job it wasn't the norm also the way i was in engineering and mm -hmm. doing seven courses a term right full so time full load yeah full load there was not much room for a part-time i got my first part-time job in the third year okay so that and you that, moved into a better place by so then? i moved into student <laughs> rent by then. okay so, okay so they kind of fell into place so i had to kind of Right. trudge through like two years of, first two years. of pain right. but that worked out so. well what would you say would be the basic basic takeaway from me from those two because i was like mm -hmm. you know you're young and you have to put up with all these inconveniences but what was the thing that you learned the most from those two years well i also learned how to attach value to things that are a bit harder to quantify yes. uh, and how to work that in my budget so mm -hmm. for at the end of it, I kind of caved and I started commuting back home and it was about two hours by train. Okay. Um, okay. And then I decided that I will learn how to sleep on a train uh, <laughs> instead of putting up with an unheated place right, right. Uh, just to save a little bit of money. So. That's interesting because like, you know, at this stage in, in life, to students, uh, they want to have that experience being away from home. And sometimes whether it's practical or not, it's not always a consideration. Yeah. And um, especially these days, yeah, um, yeah. it's, I would say, enjoy the fact that you can still live with your parents. <laughs> I had no choice, right. uh, simply because of geography. Right, right, uh, right. It was too far, and I, the two-hour commute each way every day was a bit long. Mm -hmm. But uh, definitely, I started valuing what do I value more, my independence, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or saving some money. I mean, my advice would be, would be more quirky around that, okay. and it would be like, start getting geeky with numbers. Geeky with numbers, <laughs> geeky okay. with numbers. Because right. sometimes you don't expect that, like, having some uh, interesting things like do a spreadsheet okay. and then maybe you'll start liking I never thought I'm gonna like spreadsheets mm -hmm. and I was like oh, oh there's my money in there so it started getting fun and right. uh, realizing oh, oh I just put a bit of money away and I can buy something at the end of the term mm -hmm. and um, and I always had a goal for it right? yeah I'm that was gonna, the other question yeah. you're saving with a purpose yeah, yeah so I had a goal and some of them some goals were like just fine I wanted like your basketball sneakers really badly <laughs> And I just I'd save for that, and then put it out the way in a spreadsheet, and you see it in the column. Right. And that kind of gives you a little bit of a pleasure with the numbers. The motivation. The motivation. motivation. And now I'm doing like budgeting for me and some family <laughs> friends and other friends, right, and right. then I have like spreadsheets and. Yeah. Took, like, so, but you see, you like numbers. You enjoy yeah. it. But for like some people, they hear the word budget and they think straight jacket. It's not that bad. It's yeah. not that bad. The other thing is like this: nobody's making you do it, so it's right. your fun. Right. When you have to do it for a course, it's like <laughs> I have to do it. For 
Right, right. But when you do it for like oh, it's my money, it's your life. With yeah. my money, I can save something. I put something aside. I can buy something nice at the end of the term. Then you see it, and then it kind of gives you a different motivation to do it. So it's just a tool. Right. But at least you can start playing around with it. I want to ask you a question, um, and it's kind of um, related to budgeting, but. Do you, when you spend, you use cash or, or, or like credit card? I use or, credit card, credit but there's like a warning there. Like you yeah. just have to be careful. The reason I ask is because I, I, I would say that we're from a time where cash was more prevalent when there we were, were growing up. There were no and credit so, cards when I was student. Exactly. Nobody so, would give a credit card to students. Exactly. And the thing is, um, you know, the pain of paying cash, seeing that money dwindle and disappear from your wallet or purse or whatever it is, has a psychological effect on you. But now if you're tapping, um, and, and swiping and beeping, uh, it's it's easier to get into trouble than it was before. I would say there's even another layer there. It's the fact that you have like things like Uber and Lyft and Fedora and things like that. We don't even see the transaction because you have the card safe. So yes. you have two levels of, you know, I just ordered some food and mm -hmm. I didn't have to pay for it. And you don't be, yeah, it's automated it's now. Automated. So that, that's a danger in that and that's why it's important to have a spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. You don't have to write down everything. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, I went through pains where I remember having roommates and we were like okay we have to make a phone call and we're on the street and here's a quarter and we're writing it down so we can then remember the put, number put, put into it. the tally and then at the end of the month who so you, yeah. you have, sometimes do that you don't have to be that painful like with every dollar but i would say at least the broad things like know how much money you spend on food how much money you spend on entertainment how much money you spend on transportation just have some draw numbers to mm -hmm. play around and rough numbers rough numbers to kind of have in a spreadsheet and I always have two spreadsheets, like my regular expenses and one that's like kind of a recurring thing. How much is my rent? You know those things. So it's just, it's, it's easy to control for that. Just put it down. So quirky, quirky numbers, as Peter said. That was geeky with numbers. Geeky with numbers. It's so, fun. Do some uh, colors in the spreadsheet. It's col fun. Col yeah, color, make it fun. Yeah, color it up. Uh, so Kotlin's uh, takeaway point or tip for students is to start working with your spreadsheets. Start seeing the numbers in front of you and get excited about it. Uh, no, no shame being a geeky when it comes to your finance. No shame in being geeky when it comes to your finance. I have to repeat that. <laughs> well, thank you so well, much well, for taking well, the time Hopefully this to, helps. To, I'm sure it, it's interesting to hear the different perspective because everybody uh, so far has had a very different uh, experience when it comes to the undergrad, you know, and it's good for students to see that there was a time when things were done differently and it is possible still to do things the old way if you want. But the pain was still the same. Yeah, certain things don't change, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you oh, so much. My pleasure. Anytime. Okay. <laughs>